All right, so Proxmox 9 is finally here. You know, the shiny new version, built on Debian 13, it's out in the wild, promising all sorts of cool, modern virtualization goodies. But here's the weird thing. You'd expect everyone to be rushing to upgrade, right? Instead, there's this, well, this strange silence, a lot of hesitation. So let's dive in and figure out what's really going on here. And look, when I say hesitation, I'm not kidding. Get this. A recent poll showed that a staggering 56% of the Proxmox community is still holding strong on version 8. Yeah, even weeks after the new one dropped. That's, I mean, that's more than half of the user base. Which, of course, leads to a pretty obvious question. Right? What is the holdup? Is it just fear of the unknown? Is it because Proxmox 9 is missing some, you know, killer feature? Or is there something else going on? Maybe something a bit more strategic? Okay, let's break it down and see why so many of these seasoned admins and home labbers are deciding to just wait this one out. Okay, so first things first. The biggest reason, and it's a big one, it really just comes down to a super simple time-tested philosophy in the IT world. For a huge chunk of the user base, Proxmox 8 is, well, it's fine. It's rock solid, it's stable, there are no major bugs or security holes. And for them, that old saying couldn't be more true. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And this quote from a user, man, it just nails the whole feeling perfectly. I don't see any benefits. Chances of issues might be small, but why risk it? I mean, that's the whole risk-reward calculation right there, isn't it? The potential upsides of version 9 just don't seem to outweigh the very real, even if small, chance of things going sideways. The vibe is crystal clear. Right now, stability is absolutely beating novelty, hands down. Now, to really get this, you have to understand that there are basically two different camps of Proxmox users, and they have completely different goals. You've got your home lab folks, the tinkers, on one side, and on the other, you have the enterprise system administrators. And believe me, what they care about, well, it's worlds apart. And this table really lays it all out. Think about it. For a home labber, if something breaks, hey, it's a fun weekend project, right? A learning experience. Their risk tolerance is way higher. But an enterprise admin? Imagine you're managing like five clusters with 40 nodes each. Your entire job is uptime. Their risk tolerance is basically zero. So of course they're going to have a totally different strategy for upgrades. And boom, there's that strategy in a nutshell. This user is basically spelling out the golden rule for production environments. This isn't just about being paranoid. It's a lesson learned the hard way over many years. Any seasoned IT pro will tell you they've been burned by a 0.0 release before. They know the real stability, the version you can bet your job on, usually shows up in the second or third update. So they just, they professionally and very strategically wait for something like version 9.2. Okay, so what kind of trouble are we actually talking about here? I mean, this isn't just some theoretical risk. Some of the brave souls who did make the jump to version 9 have come back with some, let's call them cautionary tales. And these stories, they're a huge reason why the rest of the community is pumping the brakes so hard. I want you to picture this. It's probably late at night. You're following the official upgrade guide to the letter. You run the tool and it gives you the all clear, no warnings. Perfect. You confidently hit reboot, expecting a nice, smooth transition. And instead, nothing. The bootloader is just gone. The whole system is dead in the water, and now you're digging around for a portable monitor just to try and fix it manually. That is the exact kind of nightmare fuel everyone is trying to avoid. And that bootloader issue? Oh, it wasn't just a one-off thing. People have been reporting a whole host of other headaches. Things like UEFI boot problems that force you to switch back to legacy mode, the unbound DNS service just completely breaking, even some unexpected and not so welcome changes to high availability. And then there's the whole ecosystem to worry about. Someone pointed out that their backup software, Nakibo, probably won't officially support version 9 for a long, long time. And that's a great point. Your hypervisor doesn't exist in a vacuum. Okay, okay, so we've heard all the scary stories, all the reasons to wait. But let's be fair here. What are you actually missing out on if you stick with Proxbox 8? Because version 9 does bring some new stuff to the table, and it's only fair that we look at the trade-offs you're making. So here's the quick and dirty breakdown. On the gain side, you get that new Debian 13 Trixie based, which is nice. And the big one, especially for home labbers, is support for ZFS pool expansion. That's actually pretty cool. But then you look at what's gone. GlusterFS support? Poof. Gone. For some people, that's a total deal breaker. And as we've already talked about, that simple, clean upgrade path seems to have gone missing in action, at least for now. 
When you weigh it all up, it's pretty clear that for a lot of folks, the gains just don't outweigh the rock-solid stability they already have with version 8. All right, this brings us to the million-dollar question. We've looked at what the community is saying, we've gone over the technical risks, and we've weighed the feature trade-offs. So let's just boil all this down into a clear, simple guide on what you should probably do next. So here's the TLDR, the real bottom line. First, if your Proxmox 8 setup is stable and working for you, just stay on it, seriously. There's no ticking time bomb here. You've got security updates all the way until August 2026. Now, if you're curious, of course, test version 9. But for the love of all that is holy, do it in a sandbox on some non-critical hardware. If you're brave enough to upgrade your main system right now, just go in expecting hiccups. Be ready to troubleshoot. And finally, if you are even remotely risk-averse or you're running this in a production environment, the advice from pretty much everyone is simple. Wait for 9.2. At the end of the day, this whole decision to hold off on Proxmox 9, it really isn't about being scared of new tech or being behind the times. It's a smart, calculated choice that prioritizes reliability over novelty. And this last quote just says it all, doesn't it? In the high stakes world of virtualization, that's almost always the winning play. Stable beats sexy every single time.